Yes, the USMLE exams are difficult. And I myself struggled when I was preparing for these exams. But I ended up scoring 271 on the step 1 and 272 on the step 2 CK exam. By the end of this video, I'll share with you insider tips on the best way to prepare for the step 1 and step 2 CK exam that I learned from my own experience and mistakes. And let's start with tip number 1. Question banks. In my opinion, the best way to prepare for the step one and step two CK exam is studying from question banks. Well, because the USMLE exams are different than any exam you took throughout your medical school. Most medical school exams are focused on one subject. You study the subject, you go for the exam, and then you study the next. On the other hand, the USMLE exams cover huge amount of information, thousands and thousands of pages. So if you just rely on books and the same techniques that you use for your medical school exams, you won't perform well on the USMLE exams. What's unique about question banks is that they provide you active learning. So you're not just reading a book, you're actually thinking about a question, you're solving that question, you're finding the answers, and then reading the explanation and studying that explanation. So you're studying for the exam is geared towards high yield topics from day one. So what question banks are the best for the step one exam? In my opinion, UOL is the best question bank when it comes to preparing for the step one exam. And Ambos is another great question bank for your preparation. For the step two CK exam, it's very similar. UOL and Ambos. Although some use the question bank of step three, to prepare for the step 2 CK exam. However, keep in mind that these question banks are not small. UWorld is approaching 4,000 questions, which is a lot to study for an exam. So that's why I recommend using question banks in the early stage of your preparation. So you give enough time to solve the questions, read the explanations, study the question bank, and even review it. And by the way, don't forget to download our free guide for both the step one and the step 2 CK exam by signing up to our list below. Now my second tip for the best way to study for the USMLE exams is choosing your resources very wisely. And honestly, I recommend choosing as little resources as possible. This might seem counterintuitive. You might say, well, the more I study, the more resources I use, the higher my score. However, the opposite is true. And the reason is those students who study a lot of resources, they go and buy six, seven books, a lot of question banks, they end up studying so many resources without actually focusing on one, without actually understanding and memorizing the information that is available in one, which leads to low score on the exam. That's why I recommend choosing one to two resources, study them very well, and then move on to other resources or go to the exam if your assessment tools are showing thumbs up. Some might ask, are books included in the equation of the best ways to prepare for the step exams? And the answer is, it depends. It depends on how you like to study, and most importantly, how much time do you have? For those who don't have much time to pass the exams, or they have good baseline knowledge, I recommend going directly to the question bank. But for those who have weak baseline knowledge because they didn't study these subjects well in medical school, and they have a lot of time, they might consider studying books. But even for these people, I say, if you are able to understand the explanation of your world, even if you answer the questions wrong, that doesn't matter. Answering the question wrongs on your world does not matter. What matters is you need to learn from the question. Something I say over and over is that your world is a learning tool, not an assessment tool. So if you're studying the question bank and you're answering the question wrong, but you're learning from the explanation, you're studying the explanation very well, you're reviewing it, and then you're going to the next question that is similar and answering it correctly, that's great. But if you feel that you're having difficulty understanding the concepts of the explanation itself, or you're not able to study well from the question bank, here you might consider studying books. Another thing you might consider is having a tutor. Tutors are great help for preparing for the step exams if you're having difficulty understanding concepts. Yes, you might be able to understand that concept after spending five hours on the internet reading multiple resources, but the tutor can save you so much time by telling you what is important, what is high yield, what is low yield, why this is happening, and that can save you a lot of time and help you understand the concepts very well. If you need one-on-one -on -one tutoring to help you with your studying, we have amazing tutors. All the sessions are 100% refund if you're not satisfied. So go check it out, risk-free. The link is in the description below. Before I move on to the next point, some ask about first aid as a studying book. Be very, very careful about using first aid as a book to study from because first aid is a review book. If you go and open first aid and start to study from it as a resource for the first time, you're gonna be very disappointed because you won't be able to understand the concepts in the book because it's mainly bullet points 
for those who already understand the concepts of that topic. And I made a detailed video on how to best use first aid when studying for the step one exam. Now we can't talk about the best ways to study for any exams without talking about study techniques. And study techniques are essential, especially for the step one and step two CK exams because of how different these exams from any exam you took in your life. These are long exams, eight or nine hours. They involve a ton of information and they're stressful. So first you have to identify how many hours are you gonna study a day because that will decide your whole study schedule. And I have a detailed video on how to study 12 hours a day without burning out. And I'll leave the link for that in the cards above and in the description below. So once you identify how many hours are you able to study a day, you need to build your study schedule, which will tell you how many questions will you finish each hour, how many systems will you finish a day, how many days do you need to finish the question by in the book, when are you taking your assessment exam, when are you taking the exam, having a detailed study schedule is key to mastering any exam. And our tutors can actually help you build an individualized study plan and schedule to help you ace your exam. And we also have a detailed course on how to best prepare for exams and I'll leave the link for that in the description below. This course, like all our other courses, is 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you're not happy, just send us an email and we'll give you your money back. So after you build your study schedule and plan, now we need to go into each hour and see how you're spending that. How are you gonna take your breaks? Are you gonna study for an hour or two and then when you feel tired, you take a break? Or you're gonna say, I'm gonna finish 10 questions and then take a five minute break, then finish other 10 questions, then take five minute break. You have to be very detailed in how you're gonna take your breaks because if you just leave it up in the air, you're not gonna be productive. The Pomodoro technique is another technique that you might consider when taking your breaks in which you study for half an hour, you take five minute break, or you study for an hour, you take 10 minute break. So you have a detailed time-based schedule on when can you take your breaks. Also things to consider is active learning, which is very, very important, especially for an exam like step one or step two, because this is not your medical school exam that you're gonna review 100 pages, 200 pages and go to the exam next day and you'll see the things that you studied a day or two ago. There is no specific resource that the questions come from. Mere memorization is not gonna help you pass the exam or score high. You definitely have to memorize the information to know how to answer the question, but you need to really understand these concepts so you can analyze the question right and answer it correctly. And for that, active learning is key and that's what we discuss in multiple lessons throughout our course on how to study for exams. Also, space repetition is very important. Don't study the concept and repeat it half an hour later. Leave it a little bit, maybe a week or two or a month and then review it later because that will help your brain commit that information from short term to long term. And just keep in mind that the majority of the questions on the USMLE exams are based on you understanding and analyzing the concepts included in the materials, not just mere memorization. Another important tip that we cannot skip when talking about the best ways to prepare for the step exams, which is taking notes. I know there is always this debate of should I take notes? Should I not take notes? I'm just gonna read the questions or review the flat questions or the wrong questions. But I always recommend taking notes. And I made a detailed video about how to take notes for the USMLE exams that you can check in the cards above and in the description below. But remember, notes don't necessarily have to be written notes. Notes could be a flashcard that you make, could be a notebook with different colors, could be highlighting, could be underlining. So it doesn't have to be a specific way of taking notes. But I'm a big advocate of building some form of structure for you to review the information after you study it for the first time. And finally, I wanna end this video about the best ways to prepare for the step exams by talking about assessment tools. Assessment tools are another unique feature of the USMLE exams that you might not find on your medical school exams. These assessment tools are supposed to predict your score on the actual exam, especially for step two CK because step one is pass fail. If you score a certain score on a certain MBME or your self assessment, the hope is that your score on the actual exam would, would be within a range of five to 10 points. So now you can see how important these assessment tools are because they can predict your performance on the exam. So if you see in the early stage of your preparation that you're scoring really high and this is higher than what you're looking for, you can just go to the exam. You don't have to spend five or six extra months of studying. But if you see that you're failing the exam on the assessment tools and your exam is next week, you need to consider postponing your exam. And I always recommend doing assessment exams early on in your preparation because they can give you an idea of where you stand and how you're progressing with your studying. And of course, I also have a detailed video about assessment tools and how to best use them. And remember, if you need one-on-one -on -one help 
with the tutor to guide you through this process through any questions you have or explain difficult concepts to you don't hesitate to reach out to our tutors who will provide you the tutoring that you're looking for. And if you're not happy, we give you your money back. And by the way, if you have not signed for our free USMLE guide, go ahead and sign in the description below. And this guide will give you detailed tips on how to ace the step one and the step two CK exam. That brings us to the end of our video on the best ways to prepare for the USMLE exams. I hope you found the information in this video helpful. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell sign so you get notified whenever I post future videos on the USMLE exams. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment below or feel free to reach out to our email info at matchguide.com, my Instagram or Twitter at Malki Asad or my Facebook page Malki Asad MD. Thank you everyone so much for watching and see you in future videos. Oh, and I almost forgot and good luck on your exam.